chapter two, introduction to level one. Very interesting read. Where did you get all this information from? Who told you about it? And who told the person who told you? And etc. As in, where did all this originate from? I was taught the ancient history of our people by the elders of my tribe. They have kept it in safe custody for many thousands of years and pass it from generation to generation through oral teachings and initiation. I may have missed it, but could you give us some indication of what part of Africa your information comes from? Some of it is very familiar. Other parts are completely foreign and don't seem to correlate with any indigenous spiritual system in Africa, of which I am aware. You also spoke of initiations. To what, by whom, and of what lineage? I'm from the tribe called Botswana. My people live in different regions in Southern Africa, in the countries of Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Angola, and Namibia, but mostly in South Africa and Botswana. Our language is called Setswana or Setswana. The elders that I mentioned are the custodians of secret knowledge in my tribe. This type of secret dissemination of knowledge exists in many other tribes throughout Africa. It originated or rather became secret in ancient Egypt 6,000 years ago. Before then, it was taught openly to all black people starting at childhood. You consider all of Botswana to be one tribe? Are your initiations considered general rights which are conveyed among African community members as they reach certain ages? Or are you receiving specialized training as a Dingaka and or Sagoma? If you serve in one of these two capacities, please tell us how long you have been in training. It's rather exciting to think we have some African healers or priests from Southern Africa living in the Americas. Also, if you don't consider it intrusive, please place more environmental context on your information. Tell us what the names of the creator, intermediary gods and ancestors are within your tradition. What are some of the rituals that are safe for general public to practice? Outside of oral history, what are you authorized to share with Africans born in West? If you don't mind, I want to put a small note on the first page of this post and in the title bar indicating that your spiritual knowledge is from Botswana. Our tribe of Botswana is divided into many smaller clans. I'm from the clan called Bakatla. I'll briefly outline our initiation system for those who are new to such information. There are three types of initiatory training among my people, as is the case among many African tribes. The first is general rights, as you put it, which the youths undergo at about puberty. After that, a handful are selected to be trained as Dingaka, Ingaka, singular, Dingaka, plural. The term Sangoma belongs to the Zulu tribe and is not used among us, but it means the same thing as you probably know. A second group, much smaller, is then selected at a later stage to be trained as Griots. I am a Griot, a tribal historian, and not an Ingaka. There are two types of griots. The first is called moseki, or a memorizing griot, for lack of a better word. Such, such initiates are trained usually from childhood in certain rites that vastly improve their powers of memory to exceed that of ordinary people. Then they are taught oral history and memorize it word for word so they can transmit it to following generations exactly as they received it. The second type of griot is called mochsidi. This word is difficult to translate but it effectively means one who lives with the ancestors. I am a Mochiti. The central tenet of African initiation rite is that the lives of our ancestors, the gods, are still as vibrant today as they were in their time. With this tenet as the foundation, we are trained to access that vib vibrancy and transport our minds or spirit to their time. We are guided to travel in spirit until we reach what we call Mojako, the gate, and receive the blessings of the gatekeeper. Then we are assigned to a custodian, through whose eyes and mind we see the past. We are thus enabled to research and investigate the lives of our ancestors exactly as if they were living right now. The time we live in that state we call detoro, or dream time. It's not related to outside time. 
In just three nights, we are able to live a thousand years or more in Datoro. The experience of Datoro has a vividness that far exceeds that of modern ordinary experiences. I was taught that our ancestors lived in that type of vivid consciousness as their normal everyday experience prior to 6,000 years ago. Our present minds have been severely slowed down, so to speak, due to the deterioration of our bodies, which are interior to what, inferior to what our ancestors had then. What we discover in that state becomes indelibly etched in our mind. It is just as vivid today in my mind as it was when I completed my first tutorial 21 years ago. That's a brief overview of the experience. The rites that are actually used to open it up for us, as well as the names of the guardians, custodians, and gods we meet are sacred. What little I've told you is about as much as I'm allowed to tell. The secrecy in which we are initiated today is only a temporary phenomenon. It started 6,000 years ago to keep certain knowledge from the present rulers of the world. Before then, all black people were taught as a matter of course, using the same kinds of rites and rituals. We have reached a point in this 6,000 year cycle when the empire of the white man is about to crumble. The secret initiations are about to be reestablished as a common teaching method. That's the reason why I prepared and posted these teachings. Who taught these elders? Where did they get their knowledge? Is their knowledge available in other forms outside of your post? Should you really be sharing this knowledge? Black root science, is it a way of life or like a religion or just a form of science, which is based on earthly principles and one heaven or space principles? Can it tell us about afterlife or the end of the flesh man and the birth of the spirit man? Does it explain the spirit as E equals MC squared energy that is not destroyed, just changing form? Can it justify how soul, spirit, and body work in harmony as one? Who taught my elders? They were taught by their own elders. Every generation of my tribe have their own elders. Before they pass on or ascend, they initiate new people to become the custodians of tribal knowledge. This system of education by initiation has been going on in my tribe, as well as 11 other tribes, for 6,000 years. Where did they get their knowledge? Our knowledge was established 6,000 years ago into a coherent system of initiation rites by Yakub, whose real name is Yahweh. He divided the knowledge into three compartments. The first and the highest in this age consists of 360 degrees of knowledge. It is this system in which I am initiated. The second consists of 36 degrees of knowledge. It is upon this system that the mystery temples of ancient Egypt were founded. That knowledge is called the wisdom of the 36 natures. The third and final system consists of 33 degrees of knowledge. Yaqub and Yahweh established it for teaching the non-Black races. In ancient times, the most intelligent of them were recruited from their countries into the Ethiopian empire, including Egypt and the Middle East. They were taught the 33 degrees of knowledge and then sent back to their homelands where they are established secret societies. The most predominant still in existence today are the so-called Freemasons. The Rosicrucians and the Theosophists are the highest practitioners of the 33 degrees. And from them come the others such as the Templars, White Brotherhood of Light, Illuminati and other non-Black secret societies. Is their knowledge available in other forms outside of your post? Not in the way I presented it here. I've tried to present what I've been taught in such a way that it may appeal to the largest possible audience of black people. Some of this knowledge can be found in the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. The problem is that many black people are turned off by the nation of Islam for many varied reasons, most of which have nothing to do with the teachings themselves. So in order to appeal to those black people who have been robbed of Elijah's elevating teachings, I've tried to present the truth in such a way that it does not particularly align with any of the offshoots in various groups formed since his death. And don't get me wrong, some of them know the truth. My presentation is much more general and comprehensive. It includes our history prior to the creation of our earth all the way back to the creation of our universe. Later on, I'll discuss events that are soon to occur on earth as the present cycle comes to a close. Then I'll go on to discuss what lies beyond this cycle. 
My goal is to present as comprehensive a version of the truth as is possible to be understood by those who have not yet experienced it firsthand through rites and initiations. Thus, the short answer to your question is no. There is no published information available of what I've presented here. This is the first time this knowledge has been released publicly. Which brings me to your fourth question. Should I be sharing this knowledge? Yes, we have reached the end of the present 6,000 year cycle. In fact, it ended in 1914. Since then, the non-Black races have been given an extra 100 years to repent and save their souls. This 100 year period of mercy will soon be over. Now is the time and the elders of all the tribes in Africa and elsewhere have given permission for the information to be released. We are entering a very dangerous time dangerous for the souls of our people. The non-Black races have instituted racist religions whose sole purpose is to try and stall the spiritual awakening of the Black man and woman. They have set up a religious system where the coming of the Messiah must occur according to their definitions. If any other type of Messiah comes and does not fit their descriptions, they will declare him to be a false Messiah and try to kill him. Well, this is precisely how the devils wanted to pan out. Those among them who know the truth know that the so-called Messiah is a black man, the God Yahweh himself and his angels. Therefore, they deliberately made the whole world ready to reject him. They'll say, how can the Messiah be a black man? All their religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and the rest have prepared the word world to expect a white Messiah. The knowledge I share here is crucial to prepare black people for the truth that is soon to manifest. Yahweh who made this world and its present rulers is the God of this age. He will soon come in great might and glory to reclaim his own. Those black people who have been deceived by Christianity and white Islam are in danger of rejecting him once they see he is black. That's why this truth is being told now and more will be revealed. Black Root Science, is it a religion? Black Root Science is not a religion. It's a reminder to Black people who have forgotten their glorious heritage. Prior to 6,000 years ago, religions did not exist. Black people then lived a natural life. What you call earthly principles or the laws of nature were designed by the 1 billion, 8 million original people. They are the laws that govern existence in the universe. Black people as gods are not subject to the laws of nature. They are the creators of the laws of nature. All other creatures and beings created by Black people, including the non-Black races, are subject to the laws. We made ourselves subject to these laws only now in this 6,000 year cycle in order to experience what is called caused by self-forgetfulness. All of heaven and earth are the creation of Black people. What is called heaven is a mental state. It's not a physical space somewhere. It exists only in the mind. In scriptures such as the Bible and the Quran, the word heaven is also used to mean sky. When it says the gods appear in the heavens, it means they appear in the sky in their spaceships. Einstein's law of E equals MC squared applies only to the physical universe. It does not apply to spirit. It is true that energy cannot be destroyed. That's because energy is a condensation of the mind and the mind has neither beginning nor end. Therefore, energy can be created again and again without end. And what the black man creates can never be destroyed. 